This experiment involves high temperatures and strong acids. Proper safety equipment must be worn at all times. Hydriodic acid is a very useful acid to convert primary alcohols into alkyl halides. The resulting alkyl halide can be used in many reactions such as the Grignard reaction. Hydriodic acid is also famously known for its use in the production of methamphetamine. I highly advise against the attempt of synthesizing any illegal chemicals. Also, I won't answer any questions relating to the production of anything illegal. For this experiment, I used 20 grams of potassium iodide, 11.5 milliliters of 75% phosphoric acid, and some 10% sodium hydroxide solution. The entire procedure and all the information was obtained by the step-by-step write-up by Argox found in the Arrowhead archive. First, a 100 milliliter flask was charged with 20 grams of potassium iodide. A few boiling chips were then dropped in. Then, 11.5 milliliters of 75% phosphoric acid was added. A base trap was set up using 10% sodium hydroxide and an inverted funnel. The inverted funnel is used to prevent suck back from occurring. A distillation setup was prepared and the heat was cranked to max. The collecting flask is also initially filled with 10% sodium hydroxide. The use of the sodium hydroxide is extremely important and I'll explain why. When using low grade phosphoric acid, traces of sulfur will exist. This will lead to the production of hydrogen sulfide. If your acid contains sulfur, the initial distillate that comes over might be milky white. The hydrogen sulfide contained in the distillate will be destroyed by the sodium hydroxide in the collecting flask. However, the more dangerous gaseous hydrogen sulfide must be destroyed by the sodium hydroxide trap. Low concentrations of hydrogen sulfide can easily kill you and the hydrogen sulfide actually desensitizes your smell. This means that it can still be there even at high concentrations, but you won't smell it. Hydrogen sulfide is just as poisonous as hydrogen cyanide gas. This proper safety precaution must absolutely be taken. In my case, I used HPLC grade phosphoric acid, so no hydrogen sulfide was produced. When the distillate changes from milky white to reddish brown, the collecting flask and the trap must be changed. Replace the collecting flask with a clean, empty round bottom flask, and replace the NaOH trap with a small amount of water. Let the distillation run on maximum heat until no more distillate comes over. In this distillation, both aqueous and gaseous hydriodic acid will be produced. The collecting flask is used to capture the aqueous portion, whereas the trap is used to capture the gaseous portion. The reactions that are likely happening are shown above. In the first reaction, less heat is required and the potassium iodide reacts with the phosphoric acid to produce aqueous hydriodic acid and monopotassium phosphate. At higher temperatures, when the water is being boiled off, the monopotassium phosphate can react with the potassium iodide to produce gaseous hydriodic acid and dipotassium phosphate. Be aware, however, that these reactions are only speculation. After the distillation, the dilute hydriodic acid in the trap was added to the collecting flask. Then, a few boiling stones were added. Boil the distillate until the temperature reaches about 127 degrees Celsius. Everything that comes over below about 125 to 127 degrees Celsius is mostly water with some dilute hydroidic acid. It might be worth saving the dilute hydroidic acid for your next distillation run. At this point, you can replace the collecting flask and boil everything over, or simply remove the heat and collect the nearly pure 57% hydroidic acid that remains in the boiling flask. The final yield was about 5 milliliters of hydriodic acid with a density of about 1.71 grams milliliter. My yield was quite low, only hovering slightly above 30%. However, it appears that at larger scales, the yield is significantly better for unknown reasons. According to Argox, the efficiency at the 22 liter scale is about 92%, whereas the efficiency at the 1 liter scale is only 75%.
I didn't have a use for the hydroidic acid, so it was neutralized using some sodium hydroxide solution.